Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Crypto Andy Show. So I am looking at this article. 28,000 Bitcoin is in the cards, but it won't happen without a struggle. So professional Bitcoin traders displayed strength after BTC price corrected to 25,800. So they're saying that Bitcoin could move up to 28,000 right around here at the top of, of my drawing. Um, I put this at, you know, right at 29, almost, right almost at 29, and at 26,600, if I was to draw a channel of the recent action since March 18, this is what it would be. And just looking at this, it peaked and it's been going down, right? So they're saying Bitcoin could hit 20,000. Not without a struggle. Bitcoin's price declined for eight consecutive days through May 13, totaling 9.4 correction. Last time such a losing streak happened was on June 14, 2022, after the Celsius lending program halted withdrawals. So something on that kind of level is happening to, you know, it peaked on April 14th and it's been going down since, right? Let's see what else this article says. FUD is quickly losing steam, regardless of the rationale behind the struggling demand for blockchain space. By May 12th, the average transaction fee dropped 82% to $5.10 from a $31 peak on May 7th, according to blockchain.com data. So it's easier to send Bitcoin. It's you're paying less money, right? 83% less money, which is a lot. Bitcoin futures remain neutral despite price correction. So Bitcoin quarterly futures are popular among whales and arbitrage desks. So these are the people with the most Bitcoin that are very savvy. They're the ones doing um, futures because you need a lot of money to do it. You need a lot of strategy to do it. Uh, BTC futures contracts in healthy markets should trade 5-10% annualized premium, a situation known as Contango, which is not unique to crypto markets. Bitcoin traders have been extremely cautious in the past two weeks. On the other hand, the BTC futures premium stood at 1% or even higher after the 12.7% day correction. So it corrected down. Bitcoin risk metrics stood neutral. Traders also analyze options markets, meaning that they're betting that Bitcoin's price goes down when you're trading an option, right? You're, you buy it at this price, buy it at 28,000, and you sell it at 25, and you pocket the $3,000 difference, right? In short, if traders uh, anticipate a Bitcoin price drop, the metric will rise above 7%. And phases of excitement tend to have a negative 7%. So if, if there's a positive sign, then the price premiums increase, right? And they're saying if traders anticipate a bigger price drop, the SKU metric will rise 7%. And phases of excitement tend to have a negative 7%. So if options are doing good, it goes up 7%. If, it, if they're pessimistic on options, meaning that the price will go up, so they're not one of betting against that, then it goes down. So these are all reasons for it to struggle, right? This whole article. It could go up to 28,000. And these are all really good metrics on what other people are doing, what the whales are doing, what um, the contracts futures are doing. Those are very good. The futures markets in regular stocks and equities, people look at that to see what people are thinking, right? So let's go to BTC. I have here the RSI, which is on the low side at 42. I have an ultimate RSI, which is uh, not the same as an RSI. It has just a lot more time frames and it's better in my opinion. And you can look that up on TradingView. 
and the MACD, again, the ultimate MACD, um, multiple time frames, more accurate. So what I want to bring your attention to, however, that, so that's at 44 and the MACD is at 171. So it does look like it's going to turn around and this might have bot bottomed here, the RSI at 38. So under 30 is considered oversold. It's, it's rising from it's oversold. So could it in the next few days go up? Yep, based on this, I've no reason to think uh, that it wouldn't. Relative strength index, moving average, convergence, divergence. Um, there's no reason to think that the divergence or that the relative strength is not in that direction. I learned though, however, that these are just measures of strength, measures of moving average, convergence, divergence. If you're looking for a directional then you use something else like DMI, Chandy, Momentum. I'm not going to cover that. But just so you guys know, these are measures of strength, measures of the moving averages. Um, those are all great, but they must be used in combination with something else to be meaningful, not just on this. They're just used as a part of a set of metrics, right? If you try to use them by themselves, that you won't do super good that way. Um, like I said in the beginning, I've drawn these lines. If it was a channel, look at how perfect it would be if it got to 28,000, right? Look at how perfect that would be. So let me, let me, let me put this one up here a little bit. That is like a freaking textbook. It's like directionally going down, right? So if it breaks this line, if it breaks 26,600, then you can see a lot of downside. There's not a lot holding it up. And you could draw, you know, even stronger lines at 27,000 of resist support lines, I mean. But it, if it hits 28,000, it's a textbook bounce to the downside, triple down. Um, right now, there's no reason to think that it's gonna go back up. I mean, it'll go back up in the short term, but ultimately it'll go down, right? Is, this is what I'm just seeing since since March. So if you wanted like a short term trade, uh, you want to get out, you want to be conservative. Maybe you go, you know, twenty seven five hundred. You could pocket that a little gain there. You can, maybe you could do twenty eight. It doesn't seem like a lot of profit to the upside to me. Um, so if you want to do like a, sh a super short term trade, that'd be fine. But I wouldn't buy to hold at this price it, it looks to me like it's going down it could go down you know this could be the beginning of it going down and not just Bitcoin whole equity markets they've been talking about this for a long time how the banking situation is ready to capitulate beyond Bitcoin and Bitcoin as a bellwether for the rest of the crypto market does seem like it is on the down slope ultimately doesn't mean you can't make profit right now you can make a quick one but it would be really tight. Um, it really wouldn't be that much money. Probably you could do something other than Bitcoin, another coin, another altcoin with more upward, uh, you know, opportunity for you. But um, ultimately, you know, I would have a really tight stop loss on this one. So I think this article is, it's got some truth to it, some technical backing. It could go up to that level and then capitulate down. Ultimately, probably will capitulate down until there's another reason to think that it's gonna go back up. Maybe the situation dramatically improves and there's no crash in the economy, nothing goes wrong, but I doubt it. Uh, probably Bitcoin will go down, the crypto market will continue to go down. Doesn't mean there's not trading opportunities. This is a trading opportunity, a really small, really tight one, but you could do it. Um, no reason you shouldn't do it. Just be have a really tight stop. Um, uh, this article was really good. It really helped me see just, this might be just the top of the market. Uh, let's just for curiosity's sake, look at the SPY. Oh, let's see, index or SPX. Um, it's in a similar kind of situation. I mean, you look at this, it's, it's struggling to go up. So the likeliest place for it to go is down. So the, the Bitcoin market 
and the S- SPX, they're acting in, in tandem. They're not separated, it's not diverged. So probably ultimately, just the overall year, right? It peaked in December and it's been going down ever since. It's consolidated here to the upside, but it, it I mean, it looks to me like it's gonna go down. The S&P 500 probably will take everything down with it. Perhaps some money will flow into the crypto markets, but it'll crash first. So it, I think it's a more of an opportunity if you can get it at 20000 and and then do a, an option down. But that's so risky with cryptocurrency. Um, probably you can just short the regular stocks. You could short the SPX or something else and it would be more manageable but it does seem like ultimately everything is going to go down um it's a good article and i will see you guys on the next one